Hello friends, my name is Shayla and today I'm going to wrap up the rest of my reading for January. So for those of you who maybe aren't aware, um, I did a mid-month wrap up of the things I read in the first half of this month and I will link that below for you. This is my second half of the month wrap up. Again, I've read, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've read an additional 10 books, so that is 19 books in the month of January, and I only set my Goodreads goal for 75, so needless to say I'm well on my way to achieving that, but I'll probably hit a huge reading slump soon, so we will see how all of that goes. Needless to say, there's 10 books to get through, so let's just dig right into this thing. So the first book I'm going to talk about is a book that's on my Kindle, and it's called These Were Our Stars. This is a dystopian novel. This was an arc I received. I will be doing a review soon, closer to the release date. It's releasing in April. Just know that it is a 4.5 star book for me. In my opinion, it is everything a dystopian novel should be, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I will leave it at that. And once I get to review time, I will definitely let you guys know. Next on my list is the second book in the Magic Kingdom of Landover series, which is The Black Unicorn. I gave The Black Unicorn three stars. The Black Unicorn in particular was not my favorite in this series. I felt that everything just felt disjointed the entire story, so I couldn't give it more than a three. The first book I would give like a 3.5 or four stars. Like the first book was really enjoyable, and that's Magic Kingdom for Sale Sold. Magic Kingdom for Sale Sold is about Ben Holiday and the fact that he is not happy in his life and his wife has passed away. He's, you know, a successful lawyer and he's still not happy. So he goes on this adventure of buying a magical kingdom and he ends up buying the magical kingdom of Landover and it's about his adventures. And so this is the second book in the series. I am going to continue on. I like where the Black Unicorn ended. And so I have hope that it's going to get better. And I will be moving on to the third book here soon, and I will let you guys know what I think. Next up is volume three and volume four of Fairy Tale. So Fairy Tale is a really, really fun manga. I have read four volumes this month alone. It's basically like one a week is what I've been doing. So essentially, here's the a sample of the art style there. It's very simple, very fun. Fairy Tale is about a guild of wizards who go on various adventures to save parts of the world. But in the beginning, um, it's really simple. It's more they take simple jobs and go and solve the specific problem at hand. And they're really fun. I really enjoy them. They're very lighthearted. The characters are lovable and weird, and it's nothing but happiness for me. I just adore these so much. This manga thing is going to be a very expensive habit very soon. Somebody stop me. Next up is Can You Keep a Secret by Sophie Kinsella. So this particular book is my first Sophie Kinsella book. And I have to say it was a 3.5 star book for me. This is, this is about Emma and about how she accidentally, on a flight after a really bad meeting, she's had a really bad day, she ends up spilling her guts to the guy next to her who happens to be her boss. And it's about how they keep each other's secrets and there's a relationship. This is definitely a chiclet book. It was fun. It was better than meh. You know, maybe I just wasn't in the mood to read it. But um, the writing was done well enough that I would pick, it, pick up another Sophie Kinsella book and maybe see if I enjoyed that one more. I got this one for a dollar, so I don't feel too bad. It was definitely worth the dollar I spent on it. And um, I'll probably hang on to it in my library for a while longer at least. Next up is The Queen Geek Social Club by Laura Preble. This is about Shelby, and she, you know, is just kind of floating through life. She's really geeky, she's got a robot in her house, and she doesn't really have any friends at school, but she does go on lots of dates because she's pretty. New girl moves to town, kind of uproots everything, all of a sudden Shelby's popular, she doesn't know what to do with that, and this book definitely addresses what happens to introverts when suddenly they become popular or are suddenly around lots of people all the time. And I really enjoyed that. There is a romance in this. This is definitely a cute YA book. I gave it three stars. And I, I do think if you love YA, you'll enjoy this. Next up is Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James. This is one of the books that I really wanted to read this year as it's been on my shelf for over a year. Once I got into this, I was a little bit disappointed. The writing was a little hard for me to get into. 
I do think P.D. James was trying too hard to be a classic. Yes, I understand that this was a Regency period book, but I think the writing was a bit of a miss on that. Then again, when you're trying to compare to Austen, you're biting off a lot. And anyways, the story essentially follows Darcy and Elizabeth. They're about to host a ball and suddenly Lydia pulls up in a carriage, somebody's dead, and it's about solving the mystery of this particular person's death. So it's interesting how it all works out. I would say watch the little BBC series. You'll probably understand it better than reading the book, at least I did. Next up is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is Booktube's favorite book right now, and I finally gave it a read after getting it for Christmas. And I have to say that the book is overhyped. It is a bit of a ripoff of Harry Potter. I know Rainbow Rowell was playing with tropes and playing into that. Maybe it was supposed to be more satirical than I read it, but all in all, the characters were very lovable. I will give Rainbow Rowell credit for that, for her lovable characters. And outside of that, it just felt like Harry Potter. So if you're missing Harry Potter, go and read Carry On. Outside of that, check it out from the library first to make sure you like it. Next up is Leaving Time by Jodi Picoult. This is a 4.5 star book for me. I really enjoyed this. I did an entire review on this particular book and I will leave it linked for you. And last but not least is Passenger by Alexander Bracken. Another book on booktube that I feel has been very overhyped. I did enjoy the time travel aspect of this book. I did enjoy that there were pirates involved and how they were involved. This is about a modern gal who's 17. She is very involved with performing music and at this big concert of hers, something happens, she opens a portal and she time travels and it's about the adventures of what happens. I believe this is the first book in a duology. I do have to say I do not like where this book left off. I will be reading the next book when it comes out due to the fact that I need to know what happens. But it's one of those things where this could go really good or this could go really bad. So I'm interested to see where it goes. All right, friends, that is my January end of the month wrap up for you to wrap up the rest of my reading month. Again, that is 19 books this month. And I don't think I've ever read that many books in a month. A lot of those three star books, like they flew. They, I flew through them really quick because they were very simplistic writing and it made them easy to read. And the, f the four manga that I read, I can sit and read one of those in like an hour. So those again are really quick reads. Those are like, I'm bored with what I'm reading. I'm gonna go pick up a manga and I go and I read it. So anyways, thank you all for watching. I will see you guys with my February TBR. Bye.